iOS 26 has been around in beta form for a little over a month, and with the release of the public beta today, I wanted to give you my review so far of iOS 26 and what you can expect to see when it comes to all devices in September. As usual, quick disclaimer, my review is based off of a beta, so things obviously might and probably will change like it has been over the last month. And if you want to give the new public beta a try, just click the link in the description down below. So let's first talk about the liquid glass design because this is a huge part of the beta. And this is what's gone through quite a lot of changes over the last few weeks. As we all know, the new liquid glass design is the new design language across all platforms for Apple this year. And it brings this kind of translucent and then frosted glass look depending on what part of the UI you're in. And also specific parts of the UI like the navigation bars will have that liquid glass element. And I personally really like the look of it when it was announced, but after messing around with it in the first beta, I did notice that some of the translucency was a bit much and it made certain aspects of the UI kind of hard to read, mostly with notifications and the control center. Now, fast forward to today and between betas one through three, we've had some pretty drastic changes. The transparent elements have been dialed back quite a bit and are now a lot more frosted in most places. The liquid glass elements can be seen still when sliding across different tabs, like at the bottom of the photos app, you've got the two tabs and the music app, you got the new navigation bar. And in the camera app, you also have a lot of those new elements, but in pretty much all the other places, a lot of the hard to read elements have kind of become a little bit more frosted. I'm not sure how I feel about some of these rollbacks personally. I think beta one was a little bit much, beta two was pretty good, and beta three, there's kind of more frosted than the translucent, and so I think beta two is the good middle ground. But again, it is a beta, and so with more developer feedback and now with the public feedback potentially coming in, uh, we might see some more changes. Overall, though, I do really like some of the new changes, especially to the navigation bars, like I mentioned in the music app, photos, and the camera app. I also really enjoy the look and feel of some of these new pop-up menus as well. But of course, would love to hear from you in the comments down below. Now, as far as the new iOS 26 features outside of the whole new design, they are quite, there are quite a few that I really do enjoy. And we'll start with call screening, which essentially screens all of my calls from unknown numbers and it asks them why they are calling and then rings my phone and I can see a message on why they are calling and it's pretty nice because then I can just kind of choose to screen whether or not I want to answer their phone call and I can send a message if I don't want to and say thanks but no thanks and the automated assistant will let them know exactly what I said and it really is just like having your own personal assistant for phone calls. Now before we get into the rest of this video, I want to take a quick break to let Dan wearing a completely different shirt talk about today's sponsor, Anae a new kind of AI companion built just for your Mac. Have you ever felt like you're just juggling five different apps just to get one thing done on your Mac? Yeah, I mean, same here. That's exactly the gap that NA is solving. It's not just another assistant, it's a computer being that understands how you work, adapts to your personal workflow, and actually helps you get things done. If you need to clean up your system, you optimize performance or check for malware, you just ask. Want to enhance an image, convert a file, or get a quick summary of a long PDF or even a YouTube video? It handles all of that naturally through a simple conversation. You can record, transcribe, summarize, and share meeting details automatically as well. And what really makes Ana different is how human it feels. You're not typing out robotic commands or poking through menus. It's proactive, it's intuitive, and honestly, it's the most seamless way that I've interacted with my Mac in a long time. So join the NA closed beta to experience a new category of AI companions, where your Mac tasks become simple conversations with an intelligent companion that truly understands your needs. Click the link in the description down below to get signed up and learn more about NA and its capabilities. Another fantastic feature related to phone calls is Hold Assist. Now, I haven't really had a reason to use this in the real world quite yet, but one day it will come in handy and I absolutely can't wait to use it. So Hold Assist basically puts the other side on hold when you get placed on hold so that you can go live your life and do something else. And when the person on the other side returns, the automated assistant there will let them know that they put on Hold Assist and it will go ping you, your phone will ring back, and then you can pick it up and continue the conversation. And it's a huge time saver. I really like the live translation features too. Again, this is something I probably won't need on a regular basis, uh, but for those who do need it on a regular basis, you'll absolutely love it. You can get live translated text in messages or even FaceTime and phone calls. 
Speaking of messages, there are new backgrounds that can be set for each conversation, and there are polls that can be added to conversations as well. And you can even see when multiple people are typing in a group chat. Now, these are features that I really haven't had a chance to use a lot because, well, there aren't a lot of people that I talk to on a daily basis that are running the beta, but I did test out the backgrounds. And one of the things I don't really like is that it does change the background for you and the other person. It would be kind of cool if I can choose whether or not I want to set that for the other person or maybe the other person can accept the background. But maybe I just want my own background for specific chats uh, and just want myself to be the only one to see it and not the others. Maybe this will be a feature that gets changed in the future, but who knows. Now, visual intelligence also gets a fantastic update as it's now able to read what's on your screen and lets you search, ask questions, or act on specific content. So it works by simply pressing the volume up and side button, you know, the screenshot command, and then you'll see here at the bottom the ask and the search buttons. So simply select what you want to do, and the area of the display or screenshot that you're curious about, and you'll either get a Google search result, or if it's a product, perhaps you'll find direct links to the product via third-party apps like Etsy or Pinterest. And this works well right now, which is really cool. I also love how contextually aware it is. So if you scan like a concert poster, for example, it'll pull off all of that information and ask if you want to add it to your calendar. And there are other actions kind of like that based on the content that it sees. This is only going to get better with third-party app integrations as well. And so I really liked how it's just kind of baked into an already familiar action that people can do on a regular basis and do it pretty easily. Now, as far as some of these other smaller features go, there are a few that I am really, really enjoying, like maps, saving the places that I have visited so that I can look back and easily remember the name of that certain restaurant or store or coffee shop that I've been to. I'm not a fan of how hidden this is, though. It is a few taps deep, so you got to go to places here, you got to tap that, and then you got to go into the visited places in beta at the bottom. I kind of just wish this was at the, like, forefront of the Maps app. Maybe you got to scroll down a little bit, but it's just a little bit harder to find. But then when you do get to it, you can kind of sort by category, city, and all visits. And with the amount of traveling that I do, this is really great, especially when I go to New York quite a few times a year. I can remember that great coffee shop, uh, and I can go back pretty easily. Auto Mix is a pretty cool feature too. It went really viral when it first got announced uh, with how well songs seamlessly transition from one to the next. It kind of feels like you have your own personal DJ. But with the music that I primarily listen to, which is like pop punk, alternative rock, indie, it doesn't really play well with Auto Mix, but I have tested some of those viral examples. I think one of them was with the Lady Gaga song, and that did work really, really well. So it is very impressive. It does kind of feel like in any given playlist that you might have, assuming the songs work well, you have like your own personal DJ mixing up the songs. It's like a much, much better crossfade, basically, but like on steroids. And it's really good. But again, it doesn't quite work with what I listen to. The new games app is another nice feature, especially for my kids who have a hard time finding all of the games on their devices. I primarily use this more on the iPad, but it's across all platforms. And it gives you a great way to find out what games you have, what games that you're playing and in-game events, as well as updates, scores from friends and challenges and so much more. There are tons of other little features that are just fantastic quality of life improvements, but right now these are the main headliners along with the new design. And so far, I have been a pretty big fan of most of these changes, the design included. I do wish it was more like Beta 2 though, with the liquid glass and transparency that was toned down a little bit, but not too much like the recent update. But again, it's still pretty early and maybe this will have a chance to revert back to a good middle ground. I will say that performance has also gotten a lot better over the last three betas. It's still running a little bit hot at times, but the first beta, it was like on fire at all times. Uh, and as I mentioned a bunch, again, it's still a beta. So just keep that in mind, especially when you're installing either the developer preview or the public beta, but would love to hear from you in the comments down below what you think. And if you've had a chance to mess around with it, please let me know what your favorite features are in those comments down below. This has been Dan with Mac Rumors. Thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you around in the next video.